It's a now, legit now, question. Okay. Of course, this is not a travel show. This is at the end of the day a real estate show. So let's hit the nail on the head. So value for money. Now, if the Asian side of Istanbul is safer, less polluted, right? And overall, standard of living is higher. And on a like-for-like -like basis, property prices are lower yeah. than... The question is, is it the European part of Istanbul or the Asian part of Istanbul that delivers better value for money for a real estate investor? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk. Um, I keep on saying another episode, but I know you, the, do. you know, yeah. So it's just basically um, we're in the same place and we're filming two episodes back to back. And, and this is not the only concern of our clients and the audience. There is another concern, which is a very um, not for it's, it's not legit for a Turk, but for others, I'll accept that it's a legit concern. Istanbul, Europe versus Asia. Hold on now. This, you know, a lot of people have this illusion that you know, somehow the Istanbul's European side is far more modern and far more, you know, um, open-minded place and the Asian side is a, you know, more traditional. It's like, you know, one is France and the other one is China or something. I remember you telling me one time that one of your clients asked you, does, do Asians live on the Asian side or something yeah. like that? Very do Asians live on the Asian side of Istanbul? Yeah, I mean... I got asked that question. Yeah. yeah, and that's 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 a pretty strange situation. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, which on, is a rather important question. First of all, is there really a difference between Europe and Asia in the sense that people are referring to? I expect that you're just going to say no and we'll move on. The real question is why the Asian side is being disregarded by foreign investors. What's the reason for that? All right. I think there are I think there are two main reasons and, and there are other reasons which in my opinion are sub reasons of those two main reasons number one number one we now we, we we're talking about foreign real estate investors we're talking we're looking at it from the context of real estate investment there are two main reasons one lack of information and two lack of promotion because why lack of information i think simply a lot of real estate investors are not familiar with the Asian side of Istanbul. And the reason Correct. for that wow. is that that the main airport of Istanbul is, um, well, as it used to be Atatürk Airport on the European side, and now Istanbul Airport again on the European side. And also the main tourist attractions of Istanbul, like the Blue Mosque, Topkapı Palace, and, and all of those, they are on the European side of Istanbul. As such... Um, a lot of our foreign investors who kind of gain their familiarity with Istanbul through tourism to start with is over the years they came as tourists and they enjoyed it, they liked it and then they conceived the idea of investing in real estate. They kind of stuck to the European side because this is where majority of the tourist attractions, the historic attractions are that's the or they think that's where they are. So I think it's familiarity. That's, a, that's number one, the lack of information, lack of knowledge. And the second thing from the real estate perspective is quite a striking one. It's quite, quite an interesting one, actually. Now, as you know, um, a great majority of um, agents, real estate agents, who promote real estate, Turkish real estate, um, to overseas buyers are rather new in Istanbul particularly for Istanbul, you're looking at, I'd say to you, 80-90% of all agents covering Istanbul uh, are no more than three years in the business. I, I would even say two years. Two, three years in the business. So it's a very, very new segment for majority of yeah, the some agents. People, correct. And interestingly, interestingly, interesting, and you'll find this rather difficult to believe but a lot of these agents they not they don't really know the asian side of istanbul themselves so for them to actually go after um, properties listings um, 
new developments or existing developments. In other words, for them to search and find properties to sell on the Asian side is more difficult. They basically don't know. They don't know. So, because they don't know and they don't have access to a lot of these properties, then they're not, naturally, they're not promoting the Asian side as much. So, it's lack of knowledge and lack of promotion. And the lack of knowledge, yeah. there is within that lack of knowledge, a, sub, a, a subcategory of that, most certainly from a lot of our real estate investors, overseas investors, is a mental blockage. There is a very strong mental blockage. People kind of want to come to Istanbul and invest in Istanbul. And for them, Istanbul is kind of Europe. And they prefer to invest in Europe. So there is that mental blockage, which is a very difficult thing to understand. If, when you sit where we sit in Istanbul, yeah. when we, you know, it's, it's almost funny. It's it comical. Funny. But you know what? Um, it is there. There's a mental blockage. People believe that the European part of Istanbul is real Istanbul, is the more modern, the more contemporary, the more happening part of Istanbul. Not at all. And the Asian side of Istanbul, mm, it's, um, it's Asian. It's yeah. less happening, less colorful, uh, not as good for investment. That's a mental blockage. Yeah, that's correct. But also, uh, Istanbul is not divided into Asia and Europe, and you don't really see that in your postcode or, or address. I mean, it's not like um, Shishli, Halide, Dipadavar, Mahalide, Europe, Europe <laughs> Istanbul, and Europe. Fikir yeah. Asia. Asia, Istanbul, Asia. Yeah. You, you don't have that. I Istanbul ha is made up of 39 districts, and the 39 districts is being administered from one center and there is no such division. It's not like, I mean, I'm not asking, I'm not even saying this, you know, oh, the municipality do not differentiate between Europeans and Asian. There is no such thing. It yeah. doesn't exist. It doesn't It's just actually. one city. It's not even like, you know, it's, you know, these some countries, you know, blacks and whites or two different ethnicities. People yeah. say, no, there is no racism. There is no difference between that color and this color. <laughs> there is no color. That's what I'm saying. So there is no color between the difference between, you know, um, these places. Yeah. But um, having yeah. said that, Aladdin, having said that, um, the European side of Istanbul and the Asian side of Istanbul, um, basically, once you cross over the bridge, uh, the other side of the Bosphorus, there are differences. Of course. There, there are. are striking differences. There are striking differences, mostly, in my opinion, in favor of the Asians. Yes, I mean, the, the European side of Istanbul is yeah. noticeably <coughs> more chaotic. Look, I'll... Noticeably I, I, more chaotic. I have some... Let's talk some facts and data yeah. to back this up, right? Go um, on. Look, I, I'm basically going to talk about two... One survey and a research. Okay. okay. The survey number one is according to NTV. You know NTV, right? One of the prime... The national uh, Turkish TV, TV, yeah. yeah. Uh, NTV. NTV says uh, the best the best municipalities that offer good quality of life. You can basically say that the standard of living. Standard of living. The yeah. Standard like of the living. standard of living index for Correct. Istanbul. Exactly. Okay. Listen to this. Number one, Adalar. Adalar means islands. The islands. Yeah. Number two, Beşiktaş. Number three, Kadıköy. So two out of three is located on the Asian side. True. And these are the good ones. The bad ones are Esenyurt, Sultan Gazi, Gazi Osman Pasha. Three of all three are located in the European side. So what, what you're saying is, according to yeah. the standard or living index for yeah. Istanbul municipalities, yeah. the three worst standard of living all of them in Europe are all on the European side. They yeah. were Esenyurt, Gazi Osman, Pasha, Gazi Osman Pasha and Sultan Gazi. And Sultan Gazi. Now, I don't know how they calculate standard of living, what what basket they well, use. Just look at those areas. I mean, it's just it's apparent. You don't need to. Be yeah, a it is scientist. apparent. Yeah. But they probably look at things like crime rate, things like pollution, things like traffic, things like affordability. But well, that goes I don't without know. saying. But Correct. whatever they look yeah. at it, basically they're saying the worst three municipalities. For sta as far as standard of living are concerned, are all on the European, European side of Istanbul. Side. And two out of three top standard of living 
are on the Asian side of Correct. Istanbul. Yeah. So now, when you have these statistics and when you turn it toward our audience and yeah. say, why do you then have a mental blockage for or toward the Asian side of Istanbul when all the facts and figures, and I could actually call 10 of our people here who are um, from Istanbul originally yeah. gener for, for generations, and the interesting thing is, all 10 of them live on the Asian side of Istanbul. True Istanbulites, Funny enough, they live on yeah. the Asian side of Istanbul. Correct. When we have all these facts, and they are facts, Hold they're on, not don't come just our imagination. Now. Then, no, 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 I, I'm really throwing out the question. Why is it that people have this mental blockage? Why is it that people think the European side of Istanbul is somehow superior to the Asian side of Istanbul when it appears that it's actually the other way around? Other way around, and that that is one survey, and, and let me give you another research okay, from Yildiz Technik University, one okay. of the most prominent universities in Istanbul. Okay. So basically, this is the safest municipalities. Municipal municipalities safe safety index, okay? Is that according to crime rate? Yeah, correct. So we're looking at the crime index. Yes, uh, safety. <laughs> safety, crime and safe, okay. Yeah. All right, so um, best municipalities. Safest municipalities. Safest municipalities, yeah. like high ranking. Kadıköy, Bakırköy, Maltepe, Kartal, Islands, four out of five in the Asian side. Four out of five. Yeah, only one. 80%. Yeah. Are on the Asian side of Istanbul. Just one in Only the European 20% side. on the European side. Listen to this now. Safest. Now that's something. This is the these are the least safe. Least places. safe or municipalities least of Istanbul. Safest municipalities. Listen now. Esenyurt, Küçükçekmece, Çatalca, Bağcılar, Arnavutköy, <laughs> Pendik, five out of six located in Europe. So I mean So guys, all the statistics point to what? The Asian side of Istanbul being a much better of place to live than okay. the European side of Istanbul. I mean, f for us, I mean, we understand this because we live in Istanbul. We're Turks. You know, we speak the language. We, we, we were born here. And, you know, and it's, for us, it makes sense. But for, you know, foreigners, it's now, a legit now, question. Okay. Of course, this is not a travel show. This is at the end of the day a real estate show. So let's hit the nail on the head. So, value for money. Now, if the Asian side of Istanbul is safer, less polluted, right? And overall, standard of living is higher. And on a like-for-like -like basis, property prices are lower. Yeah. Then the question is, is it the European part of Istanbul or the Asian part of Istanbul that delivers better value for money for a real estate investor? Please comment the answers. I mean, down I below. think the answer is yeah, very very simple, right? I think I think we'll, you don't we'll need see to be an atom scientist yeah. to answer this question, do you? Yeah, that's that's correct. So yeah, I mean, I really really hope that future investors, real estate investors. Um, who rightfully are eyeing up Istanbul. It's a beautiful city. And it's a city with a very bright future, 100%. Um, get rid of this mental blockage and see the Asian side of Istanbul for what it really is and the lifestyle that it offers. Now, here's another thing. Go ahead. I, I just came up with this. All right. Again... European part of Istanbul. So, you know, you're coming to Istanbul, you're coming to Europe. So, you have this kind of notion that the European part of Istanbul is more European. In fact, I'd say to you that the Asian part of Istanbul is way more European than the European part of Istanbul. That's correct. In terms of lifestyle, in terms of the openness, the, 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 the way people take their time, the way people enjoy their strolls along many, many miles or see from promenades that we have, man. where the traffic is less, where pollution is less. You know, you can actually smell it. When you go to Kadiko, when you look around, oh, it's, it's no different from Rome, Paris, you know, the artisan streets. It's much better, are you the, the, kidding me? The, 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 the street compare. music, the yeah. cafes, the restaurants. Actually, the ambiance is really, really beautiful. It is.
And I don't think we have that ambiance um, on the European side of Istanbul anymore. Yeah. It's too commercial, too chaotic to have that easygoing, chill, day out, enjoy, listen to music, have a coffee, pop in for a cement or whatever. Yeah. If it was France, we'd say croissant, but yeah. it's cement in Turkey, having, whatever. Having said that, though, it yeah, doesn't on, mean that the European side now is all chaotic, all bad. No, no, places. we're not saying no, that. We're not saying we're just, that. We're just saying. Yeah. We're just saying maybe trying to slightly overemphasize that um, the Asian side of Istanbul deserves a very, very good look. What was that called? Unbending the curve or something like that? Suppose that you have you have a stick that is yeah. curved with an angle supposed towards this side. So in order to make it straight, you have to curve it to the other side, then it becomes straight. Well, or it breaks. Or it breaks. So we're trying to <laughs> recurve it to make it straight. So that's why we're saying Asian side, this beautiful and all. We didn't even talk about it. So European we put side. a little bit more emphasis. To make it... To, 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 to right, straighten yeah, up the yeah. truth. To, to give you the straight talk in a, in a straight way. Beautiful. Right? Is that yeah. is that so basically what is the conclusion here? Do we have a conclusion or not? We don't need to have a conclusion. We just we talk what we need to talk and we just leave the rest to the audience. I mean we talk we've been talking about twenty minutes, man. I mean yeah. obviously uh, there were some points. Well, what what, what are your what are your um favorite parts of the Asian side of Istanbul? Well, I would definitely say Kalamush Moda, you know, Kadukoi in general. Um, if I really, you know, if I'm on a budget, definitely Kartal. Kartal is amazing. Maltepe Kartal areas. It's a much better alternative. The view to, is out of yeah, this world. Kadıköy, amazing. The Princess just, Island yeah. views. I think, in my opinion, look, on a like-for-like -like basis, Kartal compares with, you know, um, this, you know, Küçük Çekmece sort of Bakırköy areas, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or, or as distance but when you look at the quality of life the urbanization and the prices in Kartal it's just it's much more amazing it's, it's do you know what brilliant. I think Aladdin? I think one of the reasons and again that falls into a sub, as a subcategory of lack of information I think one of the reasons that people are a little bit maybe put off the Asian side is because they perceive access to be a problem because you know like mm. you've got the sea in the middle the you know the the, 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 the istanbul straddles over two continents and the, the, the bosphorus kind of splits istanbul into two asia and europe i think a lot of people do not realize that really and truly you know if you're on the asian side of istanbul accessing all around istanbul could even be easier than living in a place like Beylik and Esenyurt oh. or Avcılar or Küçükçekmece on the European side of Istanbul. I would say to you that if you lived in Kadıköy or Fikirtepe, which is what we featured in our previous episode, or even, even Kartal, I would say to you, you could get to Taksim quicker than if you lived in a place like Büyükçekmece or Beylikdüzü. Esenyurt. Or Esenyurt. You could get to Taksim quicker. Yeah. Why? Well, you've got the Marmaray that goes underneath the Bosphorus that will take you from one continent to the other in five minutes, like that. Then you've got all the metro connections and everything. So... And, and traffic ferries. is less. The ferries, the traffic is less on the on the Asian side. Three bridges, one. Three bridges, bridge. exactly. Yeah. So, so you're talking about four roads that you can drive. Uh, you're talking about constant ferries. You're talking about the metro bus line. Yes. You're talking about the metro lines and future metro lines that are under construction. So there is when when you look at it, it's connected like the this. connectivity. So, the yeah, the, the, the connectivity is very high. So I I, I think again. Um, people should experience and understand that there is no access issue, whether you're on the Asian side or the European side. Because crossing the Bosphorus is like taking a walk in the park these days. It's really, a, it's, it's a river that. on a steroid, I'd like to yeah, call it. It is a river. A it's a river on a steroid. But it's, it's not a, a river. It's not a river, yes. But it's not that 
I mean, Nile River is... Wider, probably. No, it's not, but... Isn't it? Never no. seen it. <laughs> Bosphorus is wide, but... Yeah, but, but it's not a big issue. I mean, it's not No, it's not big. an issue at all. So yeah. access is not an issue. I think that's what I wanted to underline, really. Cool. Anyway, thank you very much, Cameron. Again. And again, guys, any ideas, uh, reach out to us uh, with the WhatsApp number here. And comments, put them down below. If you like the video, give it a like. And subscribe to the channel for more such informational content. That being said, thank you very much for watching and see you Thanks in the next one.